guys, it's Ashley, and today I am going to be giving you my BookCon survival guide. So I figured since BookCon and Book Expo are right around the corner that I would make this video to share some of the tips that I wished I had known going into my first year at BookCon. I've only been to BookCon once, but I feel like I have some tips and tricks that I wish I had known, which is why I wanted to make this video so that I could share them with you guys before, you know, BookCon is upon us. So whether it is your first time going to BookCon and you are nervous out of your mind or you are an experienced BookCon enthusiast, hopefully you can glean something out of my tips and tricks I've learned after being there for one year. So today's video is in paid promotion with Disney Book Group and they sent me Ship It by Britta London. When I first heard about this book through them, I was so, so excited because it sounds so freaking adorable. It was promoted to me as a Geekerella meets fangirl and even though I've never read Geekerella before, I love fangirl so I knew immediately that I had to say yes to this. This book is about a 16 year old girl named Claire who goes to Comic-Con because she's obsessed with this show called Demon Heart. And at Comic-Con she meets one of the main actors of this show whose name is Forrest. Now Claire writes fan fiction for this TV show about the main character who this guy Forrest plays, you know, being in love with one of the other male characters on the show. And so during the Q&A portion of the panel, you know, she asks them about this, if it was ever going to be a possibility, and the actor Forrest just kind of laughs it off and Claire's devastated. And so soon the Q&A goes viral and the LGBT community is pissed off about this show and what he said on this panel. And so the producer of Demon Heart hire Claire to become part of their cast for the rest of their publicity tour. It's like this thing just goes from, from one step to the next. I'm gonna read the rest of this straight from the book so that I don't mess anything up. So, what ensues is a series of colorful Comic-Con clashes between the fans and the show that lead Forrest to question his assumptions about sexuality and help Claire come out of her shell. But how far will Claire go to make her ship canon? To what lengths will Forrest go to stop her and protect his career? And will Claire ever get the guts to make a move on Tess, the very cute, extremely cool fan artist she keeps running into. This book sounds so adorable and I am so excited to read it, you guys. If you didn't know, a fun fact about this book, Britta London is actually one of the writers from Riverdale and this is her debut novel, so I thought that that was insanely cool. Even though I don't watch Riverdale and I never have, I know that a lot of people who watch booktube watch Riverdale and love Riverdale. Also, also, can we just talk about this book naked. Look at how beautiful this is. Look at it. Get out of the way, dust jacket. Look at how cute this is. I'm so obsessed. So Ship It comes out May 1st, meaning that it should already be out in the world. And if you haven't already, go get your hands on it because I'm going to read this ASAP and I'm really, really excited for you guys to read it too. So if you haven't already guessed the reason why Ship It was in my book con survival guide is because the entire book is all about Comic-Con and being at Comic-Con and how fun it is and, you know, talking to your favorite people that you've only known through through different types of media and so that is why I'm putting this video out there. Let's get into the book con survival guide tips. Yay! So my first tip to anybody going to book con or BEA for that matter is to plan, plan, plan. Don't just arrive and think that you're going to know exactly what you want to do and you're going to get a whole schedule of events and be able to plan it around there as soon as you get there. That's not how it works. I got lucky because last year I found an Excel spreadsheet that somebody had made online about every single galley, arc drop, freebie, grab that there was ever happening at BookCon, at what booth it was at and when it was at. So I was able to plan accordingly to that. Definitely look out for anything like that, any kind of schedule that BookCon puts out on their website, anything that you see from authors that you love because they'll typically tend to put out where they're going to be at certain times. It's gonna be so much fun, but only if you plan ahead because when you get there, I promise you, if you haven't gone before, you're going to be overwhelmed like I was. I walked in and I saw all of the people and I immediately shut down because it was just 
overwhelming and just so much happening at once. Planning ahead is definitely a priority if you are interested in getting things that you know you are going to want. Now my second tip is to know what to expect, even though you kind of don't if it's your first time. This is kind of difficult, but let me go into a little explanation here. This is a little different from the first part, whereas that was all about the specific things that are happening. This is just general overall knowledge of what you're going to be doing. First and foremost, get to the Javits Center early if you're planning on doing anything right that very morning. Last year, the booktube panel was at 10 a.m. right when the Javits opened, right when BookCon started, and we got there, I want to say at like 9.40, and there was a line out the door, and I don't know why I didn't expect this, but I did. Last year, I didn't have a media pass either. I was just a regular BookCon attendee, and so I don't know if you go in the same way if you're a media pass versus a book con attendee but regardless i'm telling you guys who don't have a media pass get there early if you want to do things right when they open get there early earlier than 9 30 at least because there's gonna be a line and it was like a line that that went around and then around and then around and then it went all the way down the sidewalk also know a general layout of the javits center because it was very confusing when i got there i'm telling you guys i didn't plan hardly anything when I went last year and I regret it so much. So that's why so much of this video is going to be to just plan ahead. By general layout, I mean know that the Javits Center, you have to go upstairs to get to the show floor. And then if you go up more stairs, you'll get to the food and then you'll get to, you know, some of the fun, you know, the Starbucks and stuff. And then if you go down a little bit more into the corner, there's all the little rooms for all the panels. And then on the show floor, the show floor is huge. There's going to be booths everywhere and people everywhere and crowding around everything and if you want to get to a specific you know line for an arc drop or something get there early because people start lining up way way ahead of time i know last year they had a rule that you couldn't line up until the official i think line bearer was there or something like that i don't know people were still sitting on the floor just get there early my third tip is don't expect to get everything that you want like i've been saying in this whole video there are lots and lots of people at bookcon and so you can't expect to be able to get in a line that's for an arc drop, be like the 400th person in line and still get an arc if they don't have 400 arcs. You know what I mean? People will line up well before you think that they should. People are ruthless, man. And I mean that in the best possible way. Like people are ruthless as in people are dedicated to what they want. Sometimes there will be wristband drops and if you get a wristband, you can then line up for the arc drop. So you gotta pay attention to that. You can't just line up for the arc drop unless you got a wristband for that specific arc drop. You gotta pay attention to how many arcs these people have. So if you are passing by a booth and you see a giant stack of arcs and you think, Oh, uh, they'll have more after this line's over. You're more than welcome to get in line. But you gotta be, you know, thinking about things. If you go up to a booth and you see that they don't have very many arcs and there are like 300 people in that line, you're gonna be saying, there's no point in getting in this line. They don't have enough books. Let me go on to the next thing that I wanted to do so I can be prepared to get that one. You gotta be smart about this. And don't be disappointed if you do miss something or if you get in a line and they just run out of books. It's happened to me. I wasn't in line. I made my mom get in line while I was in line for something else. For Adam Silvera's They Both Die at the End, it was an arc of it. I realize now that I have still yet to read that book, but I feel like if I had gotten that arc, that I would have been more inclined to read the book. But my mom got in the line. She was pretty close to the front. Turns out they only had 20 arcs of each of the four books they were giving out. The first 20 people in line wanted the Adam Silvera book. So my mom couldn't get it for me. But regardless, that's why you plan ahead and you make sure of these things before you get in line. <laughs> After all, you will get the book when it comes out. If you're not planning on going up to booths and getting tote bags and asking people for bags and things, then bring an extra bag because if you're getting books, you're gonna want some place to hold them. And if you, you know, have a small purse, there's no way you're gonna be putting all those books in your tiny purse, so bring an extra tote bag. And also know that you're gonna wanna sit after a few hours. So if you're walking around and you're getting tired, but you're so dedicated to it, you're more than welcome to keep going, but please don't pass out on the show floor. Please take care of yourself and sit if you need to. It is not the end of the world, you guys. This next tip is really, really important. Plan a designated meeting spot 
with your friends. I cannot stress this enough because when you get there, if you say, oh my gosh, we're gonna meet up on the show floor, it's gonna be great, you will never find that person on the show floor. You'll be walking one way and they'll be walking the other way and you guys will completely miss each other because there's so many people on the floor plan a meeting spot. If you're planning on getting a book signed or meeting an author and they have one of the designated time slots for signings, try to get a ticket to that online. Last year they opened up the tickets for that like I want to say a month before or a few weeks before BookCon started. It was like beginning of May and they were free and all you had to do was log on and click which ones you wanted and put them in and put down your name and get the tickets before they were sold out. They only had a limited number of tickets tickets per author, so that's how it works last year. This year, I'm not sure if it's gonna work the same way, but I felt like it was pretty organized at that point, so I hope that they do it again. But if you are planning on getting a book signed or meeting a specific author, I suggest doing it that way. That'll guarantee you a spot in line, that'll guarantee you that you will get to meet that author. Last year, I had gotten a ticket to go see Victoria Schwab and to get her to sign my books, and she was one of the last people. She had the five to six o'clock slot, and at six, book con closed. She continued signing until like 6.45. We were the last people in line, but like I said, it guarantees you a spot, and they will keep going. You know, for whatever reason, the line is taking forever. Another reason to try to get those tickets that guarantee you that spot is because if an author is doing an impromptu signing at, you know, a Penguin booth or a Macmillan booth or something like that, then it's not guaranteed that you being in line, you're going to be able to get your book signed. Another story with V.E. Schwab from last year for me. It was the first day of BookCon. I was, like I said, completely overwhelmed. I couldn't find any of the people that I wanted to meet up with. I was just walking the show floor with my mom and I had a ticket for the V.E. Schwab signing at five o'clock. It was like two o'clock in the afternoon and I'm like, I don't think that I can make it this long. I don't know where anybody is. I don't know what to do. I have no plans. I just, I, I, I kind of want to go back to the hotel at this point because I just, I don't know what to do. I saw that Victoria Schwab was signing in the Macmillan booth at that time. So I went ahead and got in line thinking if I got my book signed now, I could give my ticket to somebody else who wanted it and they could get their spot signed at 5 p.m. and I could just leave. You know what I mean? It's like a win-win situation. So I got in line. Right before I was about to get to the front, they said, sorry guys, time's up. They cut off the line and the rest of the people behind me were out of luck. If you're planning on meeting an author, getting a book signed, try to get that ticket. And if not, plan out, like I said throughout this whole video, plan and get there early because otherwise you're gonna be out of luck like I was. And the very last tip that I wanted to mention out of all of this is just have fun. I'm making book con seem like it is this big overwhelming mess and it's just gonna be complicated and confusing. And yeah, it was for me because I was unprepared and I didn't plan out what I wanted to do and I didn't have a designated meeting spot for friends and all of these things happened and they just culminated into me almost having an anxiety attack. So the number one tip after after all of this is to have fun. If you plan ahead and you make sure you know what you're doing, you won't have to worry in your the back of your mind what you're going to be doing while you're on the floor. You'll have a list of what you're doing, you'll be able to follow it, and you'll be able to have fun. That's my number one and very, very last tip is to have fun and enjoy yourself. And if you're not enjoying yourself and you're too overwhelmed, take a seat, take a breath, drink some water, you're gonna be fine. And so you guys, that is going to be it for my book on survival guide. I hope that I could help out some of you if you're interested or if this is your first time going to book con this year. I hope that I see you there. Make sure you go pick up Ship It in stores May 1st. It should already have been in stores for two weeks by the time this video was going up. So go pick it up. Hopefully I'll have read it before by then and we'll be able to tell you how much I love it, but I'm really expecting to like it at this point because it just sounds so good. So to remember to go try it out. It comes out May 1st. Um, but other than that, that is going to be it for this video. So thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you later. Goodbye.